So have you been told that oil is gonna go away and green energy is gonna be here to stay? What we're finding out is that oil might be around a lot longer even if we go greener. A lot of people have been asking me from a financial perspective, well, Chris, I know you talk about oil investments, but aren't oil investments going away? Shouldn't we actually go more towards green energy instead because that's where the future is? US oil production will remain at historically high volumes through 2050, according to a new government report. And just so you know, guys, um, all things being equal, I totally agree. I think we should have a much cleaner planet cleaner fossil fuels and things like that. Sad thing is, is that a lot of the fossil fuels that are getting demonized right, right now, like natural gas, which is a clean energy, actually comes off of the oil production. So that's the ir irony. Again, I'm not opposed nice. to having um, these options. I think it's awesome. New technology, great. So this is not that kind of debate for me. I'll kind of paraphrase what I heard from Robert Kiyosaki back in 2007. So there's this, this is back in the early days when they were trying to do webinar type stuff. And they asked Kiyosaki this question, they say, I know you invest a lot in oil. Do you think oil is a bad investment right now? And Robert Kiyosaki, the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, he, he kind of grinned at the, the interviewer and said, listen, there are a lot of farmers right now that they need gas. They need gas to be able to produce. Well, that comes from the pipelines. That has to come down through and get to Texas to that rancher. That farmer's got to grow that food and that food's got to make it into the stores to hit your shelves so eventually you can eat. Oil's around to stay. That stuck with me because it kind of went against conventional wisdom or even conventional media, I should say, really, because media is telling you everything's going green, everybody's gonna have EV cars pretty soon and, and that kind of thing. But the government report, which again, from Biden's administration, the government report says that's not so much the case. Let me continue on this article and show you what I mean. So, uh, in the fact, he says uh, right here, the analysts are saying that US demand for oil and gas is likely to remain remarkably steady for decades. And remember, this is not just about driving cars. A lot of oil production is used to create plastic products. A lot of the things that you use every day. Heck, even if you ride a bicycle to work, you are probably using parts that used oil, okay? You know, you are using things that actually still require drilling, even though you're saving money on gasoline, and you're saying, well, at least my carbon emission thing isn't bad. Well, guess what? If you've been poo-pooing all over the industry saying, oh, oil is evil, oil is bad, boo-hoo. Well, guess what? You still are part of the reason why there's still oil being produced. And you might say, well, get out of our country, use it somewhere else. Well, remember Biden, just on the back end of this, like of this article, he actually just opened up that whole Alaskan pipeline, which was a, approving that, which actually created a lot of controversy among even his fellow Democrats, right? People were saying, wait a minute, you're supposed to be protecting the environment, but you just opened up Alaska. You closed down one pipeline that Trump tried to do and opened up another one. What gives? Well, what gives is, is that government officials know this. They will play you as the public saying, oh, we don't need oil, we should go green. Those bad oil companies, boo hoo. While on the other side, they go to the oil companies say, hey, we really love you guys. Sorry about making you guys look like villains, but we gotta make somebody a villain here because we don't want to be the villain. <laughs> we're, we're government officials. We gotta look like the good guys. So we're gonna make you guys the villains for right now. Uh, we'll give you a few little tax breaks and loopholes. Are we good? Yeah, is that okay? This is what's happening, guys. I know I'm oversimplifying it, but that's really essentially what's happening, isn't it? We know this is to be true. We know it's not anything that the government could not do themselves. They have been doing it. And the problem is because they demonize oil, then when they have to turn around and still use oil because they still need it, it's like almost like a necessary evil for what they're trying to say here, that's the problem. So like I said, 2050, they said increase in production is gonna happen. Here's what's interesting. Now I'm gonna go to this right now. So they talk about motor gasoline and diesel fuel, right? It's still in demand for 2050. It says the US currently produces about 20 million barrels of oil per day. Looking at 2050, the EIA analysts see the possibility of, of one high oil and gas supply scenario. So they're looking at multiple scenarios depending on what happens, where that number jumps to around 30 million barrels per day, per day in 2050. Production stays steady or goes down slightly in other models, but in every case that analysts modeled, the US will remain a net exporter of petroleum products and natural gas through 2050. So in other words, get used to it. Now they, they say this, they say, but the process is like to be, likely to be very gradual. In the EV space, for example, EIA and analysts project that clean cars will only make up less than 20% of the overall automobile market in 2050. Now that sounds way different way different than the kind of the image and the picture they painted for us. 2050, that's still more than 25 years down the road. And they're saying less than 20% of vehicles are electric. I mean, come on, with how popular Tesla is, you'd think it'd be like 50, 100% of vehicles would be electric. It sounds like everyone wants to jump on the EV bandwagon, but what they're saying is not so much. There's still gonna be more gasoline vehicles on the road than EV. 
Now you might say, well, that's because people are just jerks or whatever, but it could also be for the very reasons and the crit critiques that have been happening already. The fact that you pay a lot of money for something, it's not very convenient because they're just now starting to get some better charging stations. But I'll tell you, I was driving with my friend in a Tesla recently, and then he said, oh, hey, before we go anywhere, I've got to make a stop. I got to go and replace this big battery. It was like a, you know, I can't remember how expensive the battery was. It was super duper expensive. He had to go in the Tesla shop, get his battery exchanged because his car wasn't working right. And then he paid a bunch of money for that. And then we were able to drive and move along, you know, into his little, you know, remote control car called a Tesla. Now it was a cool car, right? But that's inconvenient, right? It's not like you can just pull over to any shop. He had to go right to that Tesla dealership to be able to get that serviced right away. He had to get that new battery part put into his car. So. So that's part of the problem, right? I can see that there's still inconveniences. Even if they start to get things more convenient over time, people may still choose otherwise because who does this say that the technology would really be that great even in 30 years? Here's what they say, you know, motor gasoline and diesel fuel are still in demand in 2050. So what does that mean for you, right? This is ultimately what I'm really trying to make this point here is that for you, many times people say oil and gas investments are bad, but I'm telling you right now, we're already underproducing on the oil side underproducing and it takes years to build up that equipment because it's been demonized for so long. And I know this from some of our contacts in the oil industry, they've been demonizing oil industry for so long that they've stopped making the equipment to drill more. So once the administration, whoever gets in office, doesn't matter Democrat or Republican, they're both guilty of this. But once they get in and say, hey, we want you to do more drilling, they're gonna say, well, we gotta make the equipment to be able to do that, which could take another couple of years before you have the equipment, the supplies, to be able to actually produce what you need, which could take up anywhere from two to five years. That means if we ever have an oil shortage, guys, that means we would be dealing with excessively high prices for a couple years before we finally get relief. That's how desperate we are right now for needing more oil. So my point is this, is it a bad investment? Not necessarily. Uh, it doesn't mean it's a bad investment. In fact, I'm literally banking on the fact that I think it's gonna be in higher demand and that prices are gonna go up. And in fact, if inflation does keep going up, which we all pretty much know it will, that will also have to increase as well to be able to make up for those demands, especially if they have rising costs in their industry as well. So for me personally, although I love real estate investing, I also have money in things that are oil and gas based because if I'm gonna have to pay more at the pump, I'm gonna definitely have to make more on my money too. If you love this video, you should check out this next video called Get Used to Making Less and you'll see what I mean by that.